Good morning, y'all. I've got you with me departing Nevada County. We are headed down to the San Francisco Bay Area. And uh, I'm going to show you some tricks about complex airspace. There's a couple things that happen on this flight I think you're going you're gonna to get a lot out of. I'm Jason Miller, a full-time professional flight instructor. On the Finer Points channel, you can join me as I bring you tips and tricks that I've learned from 20 years on the flight line. All right, you guys, departing a non-towered airport like Grass Valley here is uh, pretty straightforward. But today we're flying into some of the most complex airspace in the United States of America. Uh, and there are a few unique things that happen on this flight that I think will help you as you fly into complex airspace regardless of where you are. So let's check it out. The first thing is when I tried to contact NorCal Approach on a recent commute flight to San Carlos, I knew I was on the right frequency, but I got no reply. NorCal Approach, Skyhawk 5218 Foxtrot, uh, approaching Antioch Bridge, 4500 VFR St. Carlos. Okay, we didn't get a response from them. Okay, so you guys remember that squelch is like a noise gate, right? Like you set the squelch so that when you talk on the microphone, it breaks the squelch, it opens it and allows your signal to get through. When you stop talking, it closes up that gate and you don't hear the hiss of the radio, right? Um, but if you suspect that you are close to an air traffic control uh, transmitter or you're at just too low an altitude or just not close enough, you can't hear any replies, but you can hear aircraft talking to the controller. You just can't hear the reply. Sometimes if you manually break the squelch, you can hear that person's voice through the hiss. One thing you can do when you're not sure if they're hearing you is break the squelch. Okay, so you can tell I can't hear NorCal unless I break the squelch. So they were probably responding to me and I didn't hear it. Uh, so we'll give it a little bit, little bit more time here. We'll get a little closer to where their frequency is. All right, and this was confirmed later when I finally got a hold of the Traycon controller who said I was hearing you call, right? So next time you're out there flying around, this happens all the time. Keep in mind, if you're hearing airplanes and not controllers, break the squelch and see if you can't make out what they're saying. Uh, maybe they'll be able to at least get a better frequency for you based on your position. NorCal, Skyhawk 5218, Foxtrot, one mile southeast Mount Diablo, 4,500 VFR San Carlos. There are 5218 Foxtrot, NorCal Approach. I heard you try and call earlier. What was your type again? Uh, we're Cessna 172, sign call. 5218 Foxtrot. All right, another thing that happened is a Traycon controller told me I could fly through Delta airspace. All right, some of you are going, what the heck is Jason talking about? But let's quickly just take a look at the Bay Area. The Terminal Radar Approach Control Facility, the Traycon facility, is NorCal, and they control all of the Class Bravo airspace around SFO and all of the Charlie airspace around Oakland and San Jose. The Delta airspace, the little cylinders of airspace that go up to 2,500 feet and are four nautical miles out from the center in most cases. Um, those are controlled by air traffic control towers at the Class Delta Airport. So the question becomes, can Tracon clear you through a Delta? Now technically, to go through airspace, you have to get cleared by the controlling agency. But what if the Tracon controller tries to clear you through the Delta? Check it out. When they flash right, you, got, you have permission to go through the Delta at Hayward if you'd like. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, Part two, one at Foxtrot. Okay, so, so he picked up a landline and coordinated with the Delta Tower. I wouldn't dare go through the Delta if I didn't hear that on the radio or first talk to the Delta controller. So I can continue my descent here, and that way crossing the next Bravo line won't be so tricky. Now, am I legal to go through there? I would say I probably am. If it weren't for the one time in the last 25 years, I saw a pilot get instructed to fly through a Delta uh, it's through Delta airspace by a Tracon controller and the Delta tower hadn't been properly notified so that class Delta tower actually cited the pilot with a deviation all right and then I called Tracon and said hey I want to talk to the manager I talked to the manager who promptly told me it's the PIC's responsibility to know what airspace they're in and if they're cleared or not right which was sort of throwing the pilot under the bus 
Um, so it's, it's worth thinking about. And, you know, certainly if, you know, you'd want Tracon to tell you they were, uh, that you were cleared through the Delta, but you might even want to ask them a second time, like say, Hey, can you confirm you coordinated with the class Delta airspace and that I'm cleared through that airspace? It might be annoying to them. Uh, but it'll cover your butt. All right, aviators, that's all for this episode of The Finer Points. A huge thanks to you guys for watching. Uh, leave me a comment below if there's a video you want to see specifically. Also, if you want to check out this scenario and other scenarios like it in our Ground School app, uh, please visit learnthefinerpoints.com. Huge thanks to the sponsors. Remember, the essential app for aviation is ForeFlight. They're online at foreflight.com. Also, remember that when you renew your AOPA membership, you should select Pilot Protection Services. I'm Jason Miller. You guys are the best fans on the internet. Please share this far and wide. Hit that little alert bell so you get notified of uploads and make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Most importantly, though, until next time, be safe and fly your best.